Hey, what's going on everybody? BD44 coming at you with another video early in the morning. I want to recap the Laker game as best I could because I fell asleep before the game even started and woke up like 10 minutes ago and it's 4.50 in the morning. So needless to say, I missed the entire game but did do my usual uh, studying and stats, watching highlights. I'll give you what I got. So, Anthony Davis, knee injury. That's really what the story is. Uh, I didn't actually see... The injury itself couldn't find any footage of when he heard it but i did see him collapse thriving in pain in the tunnel as he was headed out in the third quarter and it looked pretty serious um so prayers out to anthony davis obviously you know we talk about his play and how he's been doing a lot of what we're talking about is his mobility and how well he's been feeling and how well it looks like he's moving so to see him kind of go down with this injury is not surprising unfortunately he's been probably trying to overcompensate for injuries uh probably all season and it probably would have been best for us to shut him down weeks ago uh but we did not and here we are so it looks like he's going to be missing some time hopefully this mri comes back negative from what i understand he suffered two different injuries so needless to say he's going to be missing some time hopefully this is not one of those surgery type things where we're, we're talking about the peril of our season but to be honest with you it's par for the course because we know we're not winning a championship we know that. So however that path plays itself out, it won't be a surprise here at the end of the season when someone else is hoisting it. But nevertheless, that's what we know. AD's hurt. How hurt, we'll find out. And of course, when we do find out, we will discuss it here. All right. So, of course, we understand that um, health and safety protocol has been a big deal here. Um, but we got some good news. Russell Westbrook was able to play in yesterday's game. I didn't know that when I made all of the videos I made about it, but looking at the highlights, he was down there. Now, he didn't have his greatest game, but the fact that he was available is pretty much all we care about. So that was a big deal. Um, I hear that Malik Monk was back, but I didn't see him out there, so I don't know. I'm kind of confused about that whole situation. I didn't see him in the highlights. If he was out there, um, just didn't see him. Um, but we went heavy on IT tonight, and he did not disappoint Isaiah Thomas looked sharp offensively, passing the rock, making shots, being aggressive. You can clearly see that the mentality that the Lakers have that we're expecting to lose is not the mentality he came to this team with. He came in with the same type of energy and fervor that he had in the G League and these other previous situations where his shot is fallen, he's in a good rhythm, and he's continuing to be hot. So as far as I'm concerned, uh, he looked great out there, and I'm happy to have him. Our team looked better offensively with him on the floor. The ball popped really good with him on the floor, and he was giving us good shots and possessions. So as far as I'm concerned, Isaiah Thomas was a good pickup, and he's earned his way through from one game. He's already earned my respect as somebody who could help us. Um, I want to give Kent Bazemore a, a lot of credit because I looked at the stats, and he really had a good game tonight. It's one of the, He hasn't had many of those this season, so... You definitely want to give him credit. He was hitting the glass and doing what he needed to do. It was good to see uh, Shondi Brown uh, get called up, but he didn't really make an impact in 15 minutes. Kind of made a very bonehead play trying to drive it, call Anthony Towns. He wasn't the only one that tried that tonight. Obviously, it does not work. He got blocked. Braun tried it. He got blocked. Carl tried it. He got blocked. I mean, it's just when you have a player like Carl Towns, who's clearly – way above average defensively don't 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 try don't try dunking on him it's not gonna work don't try laying the ball up over him it's not gonna work so yeah as i expected carl towns was able to flex on us tonight early in the game he was able to body up anthony davis kind of embarrassing fashion backing him down just shooting over him he really bullied the hell out of our team tonight from what i saw in those highlights um got to give patrick beverly a lot of credit uh, he filled up the box score tonight. He brought the energy. He's changed culture for them from a spirit. Uh, in, I don't want to say the word spiritual, but from a uh, attitude standpoint, from a cultural standpoint, uh, he brings spirit to their team. He brings a certain level of winning attitude to their team that's been missing. And I'm not surprised to see them playing well with him on the roster. Uh, I think a lot of it actually has to do with his energy and his his uh, confidence that he brings to the table, his relentlessness and his fire. Uh, it helps any basketball team. You know, he said something along the lines of when he got there, that he hasn't missed the playoffs, and he doesn't plan on missing it with this team either. And I believed him. 
and now that they're playing as well as they are and look like they're going to make the playoffs, I don't think that's coincidence. Patrick Beverly has a lot to do with why they're winning, and, and they showed out there. Uh, Jalen Noel is a player the Lakers should have never let go of. He had 14 good points for the Minnesota Timberwolves. Just a yet another bad decision. Every time I saw Jalen Noel about three years ago when we had him in our summer league or whatever, he didn't miss any shots. He didn't do anything but make me feel like he was somebody who was going to have a future with the Lakers. They waved him. He's with Minnesota. And he played well and killed us. Not surprising. Um, so, uh, speaking of that, D'Angelo Russell had a really good game. He took advantage of us where he could, you know, he was doing things for their team, shooting the ball, making assists, doing all kinds of stuff. You know, just making us pay for letting him go too. Um, Got to give credit to to uh, uh, Beasley, uh, Malik Beasley, who was shooting the ball very well. Um, even though as a team, both teams shot the three rather poorly, I think at the end of the day, uh, they were able to get open threes because we weren't playing the perimeter properly at all. You know, Carl Anthony Towns was taking advantage of DeAndre Jordan out there. As soon as we got a chance to stretch the floor, he was just popping threes all over the place and Beasley was the same. So you could clearly see that they were able to take advantage of our poor perimeter play, and that also contributed to why we did not well do well tonight. <clears throat> uh, so, yeah, the Lakers got off to a very slow start, you know, and, and I mentioned to you guys a guy by the name of Jared Vanderbilt who's starting to establish himself as one of the perimeter, one of the premier, excuse me, premier rebounders uh, playing right now. And he put up 16 good rebounds on us, loud rebounds, that really destroyed us. They killed us on the board. Something terrible. It's one of the most glaring stats of the night. They just, and as I told you, you know, they have a bunch of good rebounders on that team. And, and they're led by guys who are tall and longer than us and who are just going to get to the highest point quicker than we are. So that was not surprising. I expected to get destroyed on the boards tonight. And that it was as bad as it was. Exactly what I thought. Um. We didn't keep our turnovers down as much as I would have liked to. I think we got it over. I think we're like 18 tonight. You know the magic number is 14. If we lose, if we turn the ball over more than 14 times, in my opinion, we probably lost the game. 18 tonight, we lost. So pay attention to that stat because that's one I'm telling you guys about a lot, and it's it's holding true. 14 or under, or you lose. Um, so that's something that 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 was staying true. Uh, I think we shot like, I don't remember. We didn't shoot that great from the line, but we never do. Uh, we shot 38% from the field, not good enough. Um, the fact that we had Russell Westbrook down there and still wasn't able to take advantage of the inside you know, play was kind of disappointing because I expected us not to be able to score inside, but it would be because we didn't have call, uh, Russell Westbrook. The fact that he was out there uh, just kind of, is a head scratcher for me for why we were able to really penetrate and get some more inside looks. I think the only thing I can honestly say is that Carl Towns and their size um, just made it so that we really didn't have a whole lot of success with that. Obviously, the players that we had missing made it so that we were leaning a little more on IT, a little more on Shondi Brown, and uh, that kind of threw the rotation off a little bit uh, for us. So, yeah, I'm still still kind of confused about who and how players ended up in this game. I thought Russell Westbrook wasn't playing. I thought Malik Monk was, you know. So a lot of that is just kind of confusing to me. Obviously, we didn't have Austin Reeves because he's in protocol. So, you know, it's just one of those situations where I miss news. And because of it, the game was a little surprising at how it looked tonight. But um, we did see Jay Huff in garbage, town, garbage time. Uh, I would like to see him get more minutes. It was good to see him put on a uniform tonight and get called up. Um, what else? You know, LeBron James kind of struggled tonight. I think one of the reasons why we struggled is because he struggled. Um, you know, he was having issues scoring the ball tonight, issues uh, being aggressive in terms of scoring specifically. And just some of the stuff he was doing out there, try and call stuff that I just didn't think was, was his best basketball plays tonight. Um, his struggles were a big contributor to why we did not succeed. Um, cut and dry. He just didn't play his greatest game. He did some good things, though. He was cutting. You know, I, I like how he's playing off the ball this year. Um, getting IT involved. I think we were, you know, trying to make it a point to make sure IT continues to stay in the rhythm he's in. And I don't think that really hurt us, but it's just one of those situations where it's like we needed him to be more aggressive. We needed him to have 30-plus points tonight, and it just wasn't available to us. So with Anthony Davis going down, that really left us behind the eight ball in terms of size. Going up against a team like this, once you remove a center, um, 
and you don't have one to replace it with, and all we got is DJ, we're not beating anybody in this league if we don't have Carl, uh, Anthony Davis out there uh, or t- some type of center to uh, assist us with our situation. We ain't beating nobody. Um, situation is really, <clears throat> with the Lakers, the situation just got really, really, really scary because obviously now if Anthony Davis is going to be out, let's say this is a season-ending injury, which it looked like it possibly could be, if it's that kind of thing, then obviously we're done. But even more so, you got to figure out how to strategize how to maneuver this roster going forward. Because, see, now you have Anthony. If he's down, you know, you, you have to figure out what you're going to do with Russell Westbrook. It's like, okay, now suddenly you're not playing for a championship this year. So does it make sense to even move forward with Russell's contract? Maybe it would be best to get rid of him, sell him for something that can get you back some assists. Just, you know, some some uh, some assets, excuse me, so that will uh, put you in a position to kind of fit fit whatever your timeline is going to be going forward. Because if you're not playing for a championship this year, then it makes no sense to be having win now pieces on the team anymore. So we'll know what we need to do with Anthony Davis' uh, status still being in the air. Once we know exactly what's going on with him, then we can start formulating opinions on what to do going forward. Because as far as I'm concerned, um, the entire plan just shifted from winning now to basically this is a wash season how can we get the most out of our roster so we could build a championship for next year and what I would do is get rid of that Russell Westbrook contract if I knew Anthony Davis was gone for the season I'm, I'm putting the season and I'm, t- I'm just telling LeBron I'm sorry because there's no reason for us to be running out there with Russell Westbrook on $200 million plus contract LeBron James on a $200 million plus contract and then not having no center no perimeter defense, <laughs> like not enough talent to even get you through the first round of the. I mean, we won't even make the playoffs with this roster without Anthony Davis or some type of center in his stead. So, you know, and no matter what team you're, LeBron James is on, it's always a win now team. You always expect to compete for a championship, even if he's the only guy who could really run. So that makes it even more tricky in how to handle this if you're Rob Palenka, because it's like Bron's still on the team. So you look at Bron, you say. Do you believe you can drag nobody to the finals of 2021? And, of course, he's going to say, yeah. And so you may keep these win-now pieces, and, of course, it's going to fail. So this is one of the situations where I look at Bron and I say, bro, um, this season's a wash, bro. Like, literally, if, if that big dude who's already been struggling is going to be down or out for however long it's going to be, it's going to be more than two weeks, that's probably going to kill our season. So. Let's start strategizing to put ourselves in a position to have next year make sense for us. Um, because if we keep the, this roster for next year and think those guys go come back and help us a year later, especially if he's coming back from a knee injury, I think we're going to be looking at a situation where we don't win it next year either. But if we start strategizing properly right now, we could strategize a way for us to at least be maximize our opportunities next season. And, uh, you know, that – that it's all about strategy. You just got to give yourself the best cha- possible chance to win a championship. If not this one, the next one. So, um, you know, as a GM type of mind, <clears throat> I immediately start switching. You know, I switch my whole thinking. It's like, all right, I, I don't get emotional as it pertains to AD. AD went down. That means we have to do other things to make our team better. So that's what that's what the Lakers need to think. And I hate to be the super pessimistic type, but the way Anthony Davis has been playing, I- I'd shut him down for the season just off the strength of how poorly he's looked if it were up to me. Uh, he's looked so bad. Like, I don't, I don't want him running around out there until he can get in shape. I look at him like I look at Zion in that way. You coming back 3.30, leg ain't healing properly. Just don't even come back this season, bro. Come back next season when you're 100%. And that's exactly how I feel about Anthony Davis. The only thing that would keep me from being comfortable following through with that is LeBron James in the timeline. That's it. If this were an Anthony Davis-led team with a bunch of kids, I'd shut his butt down. He wouldn't be seeing him no more until after the All-Star break or longer. Is like just shut him down. So, um, yeah, man. I'm like I said. I didn't expect the Lakers to win a championship since week one, week two. We not, we ain't that. So the, if he's out for the season, or if he's out for two weeks, or if he's even out for three games, nothing wavers in that. We ain't winning nothing. So, um, yeah, that's what I think. Um, this this messes with the trade aspects of the game. You know, this this, this affects what trade you're willing to make. This affects what packages you're willing to go for. This uh, this affects what packages you're willing to offer. So, Anthony Davis is, you know, he's just dealing with his health, man. Obviously, it's disappointing. And you couple that with players going in and out of the lineup for the protocol. 
and you couple that with other injuries in our age. Hindsight is 2020, but what I can say, if I could go back to the summertime when the Lakers were trying to formulate putting this team together, I would say, you know what? You guys need to zero in on something. As you're putting together an old team, you need to understand that COVID protocol is going to make it so that these old guys are going to be going in and out of the lineup. And as a result, it's harder for old guys to get jump, you know, to jump back into shape, to jump back into the fold when they've been sitting in and inconsistent in their in their place hard er for older players to adjust to that to get up for that to stay healthy through that and it's just it makes a whole lot more sense to focus on more bodies that can contribute rather than being top heavy with with heavy contracts and it makes more sense to have younger players because of what's already been said there so yeah building old and top heavy is terrible in any era but it's especially terrible when you have COVID protocol to deal with. Terrible strategy. So, yeah, that's that's what we now recognize. I think I kind of knew that already, but I wish I would have put more emphasis on it during the summer. So, yeah, that's where we're at, man. This is this is a this is one of those seasons like the Steve Nash, Dwight Howard, Kobe season. This is one of those, or you know, to a lesser degree, um, Gary Payton. Carl Malone, Shaq and Kobe. This is one of those where we just build it. Old. We built old again and are learning the same lesson we learned those last two times, that it doesn't work. It doesn't work. Building old doesn't work. Future teams, future GMs learn from this. Building old does not work. May this be the very last time we do this. So that's what I got to say about that. Um, you know, Anthony Davis, you know, we're going to miss him to a degree, but as poorly as he was playing out there, probably not. I'm just going to be real, probably not. Um, we, we sucked either way, unfortunately. But there were some things we could be excited about. Obviously, Isaiah Thomas is playing great. Obviously, Austin Reeves is a gem. We found one. Uh, we've loved some of the stuff we saw out of Russell Westbrook this year. You know, we, we, we're finding stuff out of guys. Malik Monk has played well this season, so it's not all bad, but... We're the Lakers. We plan for a championship. All of these different things, they don't they don't equate to us having a championship. Then it doesn't matter, not to us. So, I don't know, man. Get well, Anthony Davis. Lakers say, Laker fans, brace yourself for what I'm trying to prepare us for, which is we're not good enough to win. Stop dreaming of championships. Stop thinking this team gonna do it. It's not. We just don't have enough this season. And even if we overachieve, we're still going to run into somebody that's going to destroy us. That's how bad we are right now. But even if we overachieve, we don't have enough. So that's what it is, man. Carl Anthony Towns and the uh, Minnesota Timberwolves uh, did what they were supposed to do tonight. They took care of business at home against a shorthanded Laker team. They were shorthanded minus Anthony Edwards. It didn't matter. They found what they needed out of everyone else because they're a good team with depth, lots of uh, balance and youth. Uh, rebounding strengths on in various places that helped them be what I consider to be a playoff team this year. And uh, as I said, Carl Towns knew that he was going he was going to be able to take advantage of the Lakers lack of size uh, down there. Uh, he was going to have his eyes open, wide awake for a matchup against Anthony Davis to prove himself to be better than him. And I thought he he did what he was supposed to do. You know, he took care of things. That's the greatest three point shooting center of all time in my opinion. And when you don't understand that about him or you play off of him in the perimeter, he has a bunch of moves back there, step backs, all different types of stuff. That's going to put him in a position to get that shot off, and it's probably going in. And we saw that a lot tonight. The Lakers have been doing a great job starting third quarters. Tonight, we took some steps back in that regard, lost the third quarter, lost the first quarter, and that's really where we got beat up. We just let them come out of the locker room in both occasions and jump on top of us. And uh, so the good thing about the Lakers is they've done a good job of keeping that from happening recently. So I thought that might, you know, even though we took some steps back, I think ultimately once we get some players back, um, I think we had kind of exercised that demon to a degree. So I don't, I don't, I, I'm not as worried about us having a bad third quarter tonight <clears throat> on the road, missing players. And I think that had more to do with those players missing rather than us not being focused. So, um, 
yeah, man, tough, tough, tough loss, tough night. Um, you know, my level of frustration with Anthony Davis just as a whole has been over the top lately. So the fact that he's hurt again is just like, whatever, bro, whatever. I get it. You know, he's been playing hurt. I want to come at it from a positive perspective, but the level of disappointment has been about as high as any player ever put on a loop. Like, Anthony Davis is letting us down has been one of the most standout letdowns that I've ever seen. Like, truly. As bad as he's played to start this season has been as much of a disappointment as any player I've ever seen in my 30 years of watching the Lakers. Like, this has just been horribly disappointing. Like, really, really, really disappointing. You know, just he's not being himself. He's playing through injury. Uh, he's, I think he's trying, but it looks like he didn't care for a little bit. And it's just like the attitude wasn't there. The body wasn't there. It's just, it's just a complete and utter disappointment. So, you know, I do want him to get healthy. You know, hopefully when he does get healthy, he can work himself into the type of shape that he wasn't able to be in this season. But we're going to have to let him do that. You have to be patient with him, and you can't ever, ever put him in a position to be a center again. I don't give a damn how many analysts scream that the Lakers have their best chance at being a center. You see what playing center got us? You see? He told y'all he didn't want to play no center when he got here. You know, forced him to play center anyway. Look at where we are now. Now, if you listen to me, we wouldn't be in this situation because we would have a center down there that would make it so he would never need to bang. But here we are. So, yeah, that's what I got, man. This is not a good Laker video, unfortunately, with the energy that I have for this team. I'm just, I'm, I'm done. I'm done. I was done before he got hurt, but now that he's hurt, I don't even know what to say. Uh, so... Good win for the Timberwolves. All the credit goes to y'all. Game ball goes to Vanderbilt for continuing to rebound the ball like a madman. Uh, just doing things outside of himself. Stepping into like a mini Dennis Rodman role in this league. And as he continues to grow, the Minnesota Timberwolves are just going to continue to kill people on the glass. So, even though it was a lot of people over there that played extremely well, they had a full team effort getting it from bench and starters and everybody who showed up. For me, the guy who gets the game ball would have to be Vanderbilt. Because at the end of the day, I've been screaming his name as somebody who's just killing it on the boards, and he did not make me look crazy. So I'm giving him the game ball off the strip for that. My name is BDF44. <sighs> Lakers lose. What else?